Welcome to the Sikh Channel Legal Show. And today we begin a new series of the Legal Show. I'm very pleased to welcome back our regular contributor, Kalwinda Kaur, Employment Law Solicitor, who is taking a, a break from her legal career at the moment. Kalwinda, welcome back to the Legal Show. We missed you. Thank you, Val. It's a pleasure to be back here with you all. Thank you. And Thank you've had a recent well. change in your career. You're taking a break from the legal profession. Is that right? Um, just trying out different roles, to be honest, um, working more in in house and gives me time to work on other projects as well. That's absolutely great. Today we want to speak about general updates, current topics in the legal world. And we may begin with the the weather and the change in the seasons. We've got the dark, cold nights now. It gets dark very early, usually about 4 p.m. across the UK. How are you finding the change in the season? Oh, it always gets me really bad, actually. Um, so I really miss the sunshine. I use one of those vitamin D lights. I don't know if you've seen them. It helps with people who have the seasonal associated disorder. So I like that. It gives me an energy boost and just keeping cozy winter nights and making the most of it and just embracing the different seasons. But I never used to like winter, to be honest. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a, it does have its beauty, the winter season, but it also has its dangers, particularly for people on the roads, people who are driving or pedestrians walking home from work in the evening when it's dark. And as a personal injury lawyer, I always ask our viewers to take extra care during the winter months. What are the sort of dangers that you find uh, on the roads when it gets dark much earlier? Well, I consider myself to be a really good driver actually and a safe driver. Um, not all my passengers agree <laughs> because they think maybe I'm a bit too careful, but I just think, you know, we're in charge of a dangerous vehicle. We have to be so careful with children on the, on the, uh, as pedestrians, you know, the elderly, um cyclists motorbikes just weaving in and out of traffic so just got to be so careful these days and you know looking out for those restricted areas where there's minimal light or perhaps pedestrians just peeping through standstill traffic and trying to cross the road so there's so many hazards and dangers that we've got to be more resp responsible, you know, as road re road users. Absolutely. And when we think of pedestrians and accidents, we sometimes assume that it's children, it's just children. But in fact, the statistics tell us a different story. Most accidents uh, suffered by pedestrians are adults. And very often, it can be the elderly who are trying to get across the road their vision might be, not be so good or they may be very slow in getting across the road and people are rushing. And I've had a number of clients in the past and recently, elderly people who've been hit by cars on the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're probably um, well versed with the statistics there, but yes, rightfully so, it could be anybody, um, you know, in the wrong place, wrong time, you know, and it may not be a responsible driver on the road, which is a whole different topic in terms of uninsured drivers or reckless drivers who may be over the limit or, you know, maybe not on their medication. There's so many different reasons and so many, it just adds to the different dangers to be honest, but yeah, I agree. Nobody um, is immune from an accident, you know, being hit on the road. Absolutely. And if anybody does suffer an accident on the road, please do get in touch here with myself or with the Sea Channel team and we'll try and assist you and point you in the right direction. Because 
often, especially elderly people, if they suffer an injury, it's a, a greater uh, inconvenience and a greater effect on their lives. They may already have mobility issues and they may not recover as quickly as a, a younger person. Yeah, exactly. You know, and they'll, they'll have weaker bones and, you know, they it's, it's likely to be um, have such a life, um, such a drastic impact on their life. And, you know, there may be some injuries that they don't fully recover from. So it's um, it's worse for, for the elderly, definitely. And particularly, they're often not aware of their rights, Govinda, even though um, the solicitors and legal professionals from our community now, even so, there's still a lot of people who are not aware of their right to bring a claim for compensation and being able to speak Punjabi, Hindi, all the different languages, we can assist anybody who's unsure of their rights. And particularly at this time of year, when it's dark and cold, people are a bit more vulnerable. And it's not just the elderly, people work, walking home from work. We've got the cost of living crisis upon us. I know for a fact, a lot of my people that I know in my circle are driving less and using public transport more and walking more than they used to, to keep costs down. Yeah, absolutely. You know, at the moment, it seems to be one thing after another. What with the um, fuel prices, now the energy crisis, the cost of living going up. You know, there's there's a lot of ways that people are trying to make those small adjustments. So I agree, there seems to be a lot more people on the road in terms of pedestrians, but depending on which area you're looking at, there's still a lot of people who are still using cars. So, you know, I think it's it's definitely a balancing exercise and doing what's right for you and making those adjustments. And we ask all drivers to take particular care when it's dark, to reduce their speed, look out for pedestrians, look out for elderly, adults and children who might be trying to cross the road, particularly when it's raining and there's bad weather and poor visibility. And that's when a lot of accidents do tend to occur when it's dark, visibility is poor, even at a low speed, a serious injury can be caused to a person. Yeah, absolutely. I remember when I was dealing um, with personal injury claims in the past, you know, it's not necessarily the high impact accidents that cause most of the damage, it can be low impact as well. Um, so, you know, even if you're that much over the time, um, the speed limit, you know, that 10 miles per hour can make a huge difference. And we've all seen the government adverts around that in the past, you know, how, how much of an impact it can make w between somebody living and not living, unfortunately. And Govinda, there's lots of different types of lawyers. I'm a specialist in personal injury and helping people claim compensation. And I've been doing it for many, many years, over two decades now, a very long time. How important is it for people to see a specialist in your mind? It's absolutely critical because you want somebody in your corner you know who's advising you of all the rights of what you're entitled to claim and you know being able to take you through the process step by step so I think it's absolutely critical that you get the right level of support and right from the outset as well. Yes because securing important evidence in the early days and weeks can be important and especially as yeah. you mentioned there are cases when people don't stop their vehicle their hit and run uh, accidents do occur it's important to involve the police and get all the right details maybe capture cctv footage and so on so consulting a specialist personal injury solicitor early on is very important and if you can tell us about your current life and how you are experiencing travel have you been traveling a lot in terms of the roads i know you've been very busy have you noticed other road users 
perhaps uh, not driving as safely as you would like them to? Yeah, I think, um, unfortunately, it's a regular occurrence when somebody pulls out of a side road unexpectedly or people just taking the, those reckless chances where you have to slam on your brakes and, you know, you yourself have to be that more that much more vigilant and careful because of these other road users who are not being safe and you know particularly in the winter months when weather is not so great or visibility is reduced so yeah unfortunately it happens all the time um but you just got to be that much more careful i i myself am um working more from home but also having to do things such as the school run the school pick up the school run um and you know everyday chores so i don't actually enjoy driving that much anymore to be honest so i find it a bit of a chore so if i can avoid it i will try but it depends where you live as well you know a lot of people are not very central also need their cars to get around and it's convenient isn't it and it's nice and warm being in the car when yeah. it's cold and wet yeah some people don't like public transport and it's not always the most reliable either so you know it's it's getting that balance isn't it there's a big initiative across the country many cities london birmingham manchester to install cycling lanes there's a lot of roadworks in birmingham i'm sure there's roadworks where you are and many local authorities are now doing a lot more for cyclists with dedicated cycle lanes i think it's a fantastic initiative to be honest I've got a bike, but um, I wouldn't trust myself to be on the road with it. Um, <laughs> so, and also, you know, my son has a bike and I would love for him to be able to ride his bike to school so that we can do our part for the carbon footprint and reducing that. Um, but until these initiatives are not fully implemented, it's, it's just another danger, I feel. Um, for cyclists, particularly, um, I'm sure you, you're probably more versed with the statistics, but I mean, cyclists are, are often involved in far more accidents, you know, and so that is a very, that's right. Very serious accidents, sometimes fatal, extremely yeah. upsetting and tragic circumstances. And I was speaking with a producer of this program, Karthik, this evening as we drove home very late after a late evening in the studio uh, because we received many of our visitors, of our uh, Sikh Channel supporters from a tour of Pakistan. And they came very late in the evening. And as we went, there were a lot of roadworks and new cycle lanes being installed. And we discussed whether we would like to start cycling because <laughs> we both like to keep fit. And it's a good way of keeping fit, helping the environment, reducing traffic, but it is dangerous to cycle unless there are dedicated cycle lanes, which unfortunately are limited. They only go so far, then you've got to uh, take your chances with the traffic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Cambridge is fantastic for that. You know, you can't, you can't walk without nearly being knocked <laughs> by a cyclist. Um, so you've got to watch out for them because um, sort of in their lanes, speeding around. So, you know, you've got to be mindful, but I love it. I think it's definitely the way forward. And of course, cyclists are not entirely innocent. They can also cause accidents and cyclists must take care of themselves. There have been instances when cyclists have hit pedestrians and caused serious injuries. And again, there is a claim possible in those circumstances and often the cyclists will have insurance and the claim can be made on behalf of the pedestrian and uh, it's becoming increasingly 
uh, fraught on the roads, I think, because the population is increasing naturally over time. There are more new people coming to the country and there's natural population growth. And the UK is a small island. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. I think um, even with the cyclists, sometimes they would chance it and go through that red light. And, you know, sometimes they think that the rules don't apply to them. So you're absolutely right. You know, they also have a duty to other road users to to make sure that they're traveling safely and and you know obeying the rules as well and there's been a lot of change in the regulations around personal injury cases the government have tried they've tried their best to reduce the number of claims or to make it more difficult for people to claim and this has been led by the desire of the insurance companies to save money. There's no other purpose to it other than to create more profit for insurance companies. And in a time of a uh, great uh, financial crisis upon ordinary people, it's even more important that people take up their rights to make a claim if they have a, a genuine injury. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The the rules and the law is there to protect people. So where they've been injured, um, they should always take legal advice and find out about their rights and make those claims um, so that they know where they stand. I think, um, you know, a lot of reforms have been made in order to to cost save as you as you say with the insurance companies but there needs to be a balance as well because um i think the personal injury sector did get a lot of stick for you know fraudulent claims and you know maybe not genuine claims but it's about weeding those out and and making sure at the same time that those those claims that are genuine those those claimants are being compensated for those claims. Absolutely. And uh, the uh, disingenuous claims or the people who exaggerated who made false claims is a very, very small number, Kovinda, and they were exaggerated greatly in the press and part of this compensation culture campaign. And that is no compensation culture. In fact, the number of claims have steadily been falling over the years. And I think it's time for people to realize that it's, it's a big business trying to put them off claiming to make more profits for the insurance companies. And ordinary people should not hesitate in making a claim if they have a, a genuine injury and we're here to help them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they should seek seek that help and and, you know, at least get the advice and then they know what their options are. In terms of the season that's upon us, I think we were into two seasons now. It's this one long season now until about maybe March or April, and then we get a bit of a summer. So this season of dark, cold, and often wet nights can last for several months. We ask people to take extra care to wear visible clothing when walking on the street, bright clothing to help keep them safe and be very careful when crossing the road. We ask drivers to be wary of pedestrians and particularly the elderly in congested areas. And Kovinda, there's also an issue with people who are new to the country. I've also helped many people in the recent past who are new to the country and they don't always know about the uh, highway code or the the regulations and the uh, the procedure when crossing the road for example they may look the wrong way or they may not know it's a one-way street or a two-way street and and some people have been hurt in in those situations mm -hmm. yeah i mean again i think you know where they have been hurt they should absolutely be seeking help but you know, it's, it's often quite difficult when either pedestrians don't use 
things such as the crossing islands or the zebra crossings or sometimes the the road users such as the cars are not stopping when they see somebody waiting at the zebra crossings so they would just try to dash through you know and there's been some near misses as well so i think two prong where people are not sure they should be seeking to to become informed about the the rules and the regulations by speaking to friends and family or even you know the internet is a great source of information and reaching out where they have been injured but also likewise we just need to slow down on the roads and particularly around junctions where there's crossings, zebra crossings. As, as road users, we have that greater responsibility to the pedestrians. Absolutely. And obviously the dark, it's the dark mornings and dark evenings. This applies to people both in the morning and the, in the evening as they go to work and come back from work. We need to be careful at all times. Thank you very much, Govinda, for helping us uh, highlight, in particular, pedestrian safety during this changing season and uh, the dark nights and often the weather's very bad as well, making visibility poor. It's important that we all have a greater awareness, whether we're drivers or pedestrians, and we try and look after each other and if an accident does occur, that we get the right assistance. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. And what are your plans for the future? Because you're uh, looking at uh, newer career options in your legal profession. You're an expert employment law solicitor. You've been acting in the past for employers defending employment law claims. Do you think you will act for employees? in bringing the claims against employers? Um, I think having initially started out representing the individuals and then moving over to the respondent side, I think I would probably stick to defending the matters on the respondent side. So often you you start off on one side and you change change to the other side and you generally have a feel in terms of your preference. So I think for now, I would be continued continuing to represent respondents. Because that's probably more secure. You're working for often companies and corporations, and it's a more structured approach. Whereas working for individuals, as I have been, I've been working for individuals, for people, claimants, for over 20 years, it can be more challenging because you're dealing with people and they don't have the resource or the sophistication to understand the legal process. But I have to say, I really enjoy it because you get to know and meet so many different people, different ages, backgrounds, all different communities. And I'm extremely pleased. I feel very privileged to be able to represent and work for claimants and individuals and look after ordinary people. Yeah, absolutely. What I would say is never say never. So I think sometimes it depends where you are in terms of your life journey and, you know, the sort of structure that you're looking for, what opportunities come about, what aligns with what your purpose is at that time. So I would say things always change. Um, so I may go back to representing individuals because that's always been very close to my heart as well, looking after that small person as opposed to huge organisations. But, you know, there's always a middle ground as well, which some firms do represent both, which equally works just as well. It's certainly much more satisfying and rewarding and you get a lot of personal satisfaction and sense of achievement when you've helped an elderly person or a working person gain their rightful compensation from a big insurance company. And it gives me a huge amount of uh, uh, success and pleasure and a feeling that I've done something worthwhile when I help ordinary people. 
I will never really work for the insurance companies because the solicitors will work either for the claimant or the insurance company. And I'm very pleased that I've got this position where I can represent individuals. But uh, thank you very much. Lovely to see you again. And we've restarted this new season of the legal show here on Seek Channel. And we'll be bringing new topics and new guests in the coming weeks. And uh, we look forward to hearing more from you. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure being here again and looking forward to the new series moving forward. Thank you, Kubinda. Best Thank wishes you. for the week ahead and we'll connect again next week. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-b